right, greetings everybody. This is Jason Dustel with AV Pro Edge, and today we're going to be talking about AV Pro Edge and Meridio and Canvas and Bullet Train, all of our sister companies and brands, and we're going to be talking a lot about commercial audio video and some of the products that we offer that will help some of you guys who are doing commercial integration and commercial installations, hopefully help uh, make your lives a lot easier. Uh, again, my name is Jason Dustel. We do have a couple of guests with us here today. Uh, one person that you're going to hear from quite a bit today, his name is John Tumbleson. He's going to get really deep into some of the uh, commercial switchers and the Canvas control system and uh, give us a, an idea of how some of that stuff works. Uh, we also have Tom Devine here. He is going to be manning the question box. So if you guys do have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to type those questions into the question box and Tom will do his best to get to those questions as the presentation rolls along. Uh, we will be answering some questions throughout the presentation, so don't be shy. Feel free to ask away. And then we'll leave a few minutes at the end, too, just in case there are some questions that uh, we maybe couldn't get to during the presentation. So, again, my name is Jason. I am with AV Pro Edge, uh, AV Pro Global. We have a handful of sister brands. Uh, you may have seen some stuff like uh, Meridio and Bullet Train and Canvas. Uh, this is all AV Pro Global uh, product. And, you know, really we started off, uh, in 2011, we started off as an online distribution channel. Uh, we were selling some calibration equipment and, and some things like that. And, uh, you know, the more we started talking to installers and integrators, we we realized that there was a big gap uh, for product. And there was uh, installers everywhere were asking for products to do certain things and have certain features. And we kind of found a, a hole in the market and started building our own product. So uh, it really has worked out well for us in the past few years. We were uh, the first company to... Uh, come out with uh, some 18 gigabit per second distribution products. Uh, we're we're uh, first company to be able to down mix Dolby Atmos and things like that. So we've got some really good, uh, really good uh, claims to fame at this point. And really, at the end of the day, uh, we just be able, we want to be able to make products and and give you guys the support that you need. I come from an installation background of almost 20 years, so I know how it is being out in the field and and needing that support. And and that's what we're here for. We're we're here for you guys. Uh, just a little bit about us, uh, just so you kind of get an idea of, of who we are and where we come from. Uh, first of all, if you're new to AV Pro Global, uh, welcome. Uh, we're, we're, we're super happy to have you here, and we're super happy to help you with some of your projects. Um, we come from a long line of uh, a long line of, of of electronics manufacturing, and we have people who are in our company who have been uh, involved in this industry for quite a long time. Uh, and if you've used our products before, then uh, then you know how. You know how easy they are and how robust they are and how feature rich they are. And like I said before, we, we really make this stuff for you guys. Uh, as a company, we work very closely with the Imaging Science Foundation. Uh, the Imaging Science Foundation uh, has been around since the 1990s. Uh, they're the organization that are very deeply involved with display calibration and making sure that pictures look the best that they possibly can uh, for the end user or whoever is viewing the display. Uh, we do offer some training courses like AV Pro Academy, which are fully AVIXA and CDS certified and accredited. So uh, we do have that class uh, a handful of times throughout the year up at our headquarters in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And we do also host the class around the country at, at random places and do random events. So if you're interested in taking one of our classes and seeing some of the other classes that we have to offer, again, we, uh, we, we partner up for ISF classes. We also partner up for HAA, the uh, Home Acoustic Alliance. That's for audio calibration. Also the Professional Video Alliance, another outfit for video calibration. If you're interested in any of our classes or any of those classes that I called out before, Go ahead and give us a visit at avpro.training, uh, AV and we'll be, ha uh, we'll be happy to, uh, to answer any questions you may have about the class, and, and we'd love to see your guys' faces in the class and classes and to, uh, you know, to help everybody get better as our industry grows. Uh, we're very uh, well known for our tech support department. If you guys have ever called our tech support department before, you know that we do everything we can to get you uh, help as soon as possible. We've even had people who've called us before who don't even use our product because we're, we're always willing to help. We do design and engineer and manufacture our own product, which is a little different for our industry. The fact that we own our uh, factory in Shenzhen, China, uh, we can make calls and we can change firmwares and we can, uh, we, we're very, very nimble in that regard. So if you guys have a specific feature that you're looking for, feel free to let us know because it's very easy for us to, to include things in, in our products that may not be there already. We do also offer uh, HDMI troubleshooting and calibration equipment under our Mer uh, Meridio brand. Today we're going to look at a couple of products from Meridio that will help you uh, during your installations and especially help you with troubleshooting. And uh, you know that's one big thing that we hear from installers all over the over the world. And I dealt with this too while I was in the field. You know, troubleshooting is always this long, daunting, drawn-out process where you're just you know trying different things and unplugging things and plugging them back in. And 
uh, just swapping out product to no avail and, and I know how much of a headache that can be. So having some of these troubleshooting tools is super important and saves you tons and tons of time and money at the end of the day. So we'll look at some of those products as well. Um, I did mention the AV Pro Academy class. So like I said, if you want to see some dates there, feel free to visit our website or give us a call. One of our sales engineers are, will be happy to talk to you about the class as well. Uh, one thing that we do like to tout in our company is our 10-year no BS warranty. Anything that you see, any of our products that you see with the AV Pro Edge logo, uh, everything with the AV Pro Edge brand is a 10-year warranty. Um, we build our equipment to military spec, and we also uh, we build them, we kind of over-spec things. We do this on purpose. Uh, the last thing we want you guys to do is install a system, and then, of course, on Super Bowl Sunday, there's a problem with one of the extenders or whatnot, and the customer has no picture and, and is calling you and wants you to come out and, and fix the problem. So we do build our products very robust so you don't run into those situations. And all of our Meridio product has a three-year warranty. So if you're out there troubleshooting in the field and uh, you're on top of a ladder and you accidentally drop one of your test your testing tools, uh, that product has a three-year warranty as well. Uh, if there's ever a question on whether something's covered under warranty or not, we're always happy to explore and do what we can to help you. So even if it is something like physical damage, just give us a call and, and we'll do what we can to to get that product uh, repaired or, or replaced as quickly as possible. We've been known to overnight things and stuff like that as well. So uh, if you're ever not sure, just feel free to give us a call. Uh, we'll do our best at troubleshooting it over the phone. And if we can't get it, uh, the troubleshooting, if we determine that the product is defective or if there is a problem, then we're happy to replace that product for you. So always reach out if you ever, ever have a question. So a little bit about AV Pro Commercial. Um, this hey, is Jason? a very... Yes, John, go yeah, ahead. Hi, 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 everybody. Yeah, good afternoon. I just want to quick throw one more thing in there. Kind of the unasked question or an unasked answer to the unasked question, which is that our tech support is U.S. based in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Oh, that's so, a good point. Yeah, good point. You know, I mean, a lot of places, you know, it's not U.S. based. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Go ahead, Jason. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, no, thank No, that's okay. Um, so in in the commercial world, um, you know, the, the products that we're using in the commercial world tend to be a little more demanding. Some of these products, they run 24-7 if you're in an uh, airport or something like that. Uh, they run for multiple hours a day if you're in a restaurant or those types of environments. And really, at the end of the day, our goal is to provide you guys with superior quality and extreme performance solutions for massive audio and video distribution. Meaning that, you know, failures in the middle of the day, uh, tech support issues that cannot be solved. You know, we, we try to avoid all those things at all costs, which is why we overbuild and overspec all of our equipment. Um, so, you know, those, these can be very demanding environments to be putting in product. And I know you guys are probably putting things like outdoors and uh, heat sometimes is an issue and dealing with the weather and humidity is sometimes an issue. But again, we have our 10 year warranty and, and things like that. So, um, you know, just a little bit about us and kind of what we what we're aiming for uh, to provide for you guys as installers out there all over the world. A little bit about the Meridio product. I did talk about this and just mentioned it briefly before. Uh, these products are used by installers, uh, TV manufacturers, people who work in uh, post-production facilities. And these tools are really, uh, really geared towards um, not only getting the picture calibrated correctly uh, with the Meridio 6G generator, which is going to be uh, the product that you see in the upper right corner, the dark gray. Uh, that that's a signal generator that uh, talks to multiple different so, uh, calibration software platforms. Uh, so calibrating displays and things like that, um, and being able to send test signals through a system to figure out what the problem might be on the other end. That's an awesome generator, and it's used by many, many, many people all over the world. Uh, what pairs up with that generator is the 6G analyzer. Um, I'm sorry, the 6A analyzer. And what's great about this product is you can place the generator in place of the source place the analyzer in place of the display and you can send signals through and see exactly what that display uh, is happy with as far as resolution goes and frame rate goes. I could also use either one of these two devices to read the TVs EDID to figure out exactly what it's asking for. But uh, being, able to pipe to, uh, being able to pipe test patterns through uh, infrastructure to test for compatibility with different resolutions and things like that, being able to read EDIDs, being able to analyze the signal that's coming out of a rack or out of a Blu-ray player or out of a media player or something like that. Uh, these are all great, great tools that will uh, they'll help you uh, in your install life. We do also have another kit that is uh, very, very popular uh, called the Fox and the Hound. The Fox and the Hound takes everything that the Meridio 6A and 6G does. The Fox and Hound is a bit of a stripped back version. Uh, the signal generator in this case is not used for video calibration and things like that. This is just used for people who are installing and troubleshooting out in the field. But being able to test, the, again, check for things like EDID, being able to look at signals through the system, 
it's a handheld device that's battery powered just as the 6a and 6g is these are all battery powered devices uh, you can test for hdcp compatibility uh, and it just really eliminates all the test work out of out of troubleshooting uh, these are very affordable tools again with a three-year warranty and um, you know we've heard from integrators all over this the country and all over the world that have said you know these things have saved us so much time and, and time is money right and especially in our industry where everything is just go 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 so having these tools on your truck and, and being able to troubleshoot systems easily is, is super important and uh, and again, if you are using our tools and you're trying to figure out a problem, our tech support department is always willing to help you walk through how to test things and what to look for and things like that as well. So uh, now I'm going to hand the presentation over to John and he's gonna give you guys a really awesome demo and uh, talk a lot about some of the uh, very specific AV Pro Edge commercial products and what they can do and what they're all about. So John, I'm gonna hand the presenter over to you. And now we should be looking at John's screen. There we go. Awesome. I needed to click the microphone to. Oh, uh, there you go. We can hear you now. <laughs> there you are. Okay. Well, hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to talk about these these uh, couple of commercial offerings that we have that really from from the get go were designed to be in the commercial space. They weren't really you know, residential type products because there's certain things they do that just isn't needed in a lot of cases in the in a residential space. So uh, without further ado, we'll uh, get started here. Let me make sure I've got um, my system. Okay, so the first one, oops, first one we're gonna talk about is Cloud9. Uh, for many, there's many of you out there that have used the Cloud9, it's it's a workhorse. Uh, we've, we've had it out for about three years now. It has some very, very um, you know, great features that fit into the, the commercial space. And we'll start with, with the, the first thing is, is that it's a nine input, nine output. However, it's cascadable. So you can loop back the outputs into the inputs on a second box. So that makes it a nine input by 18 output or a third box, you know, 27, 36, 45, and so on. Pretty much uh uh infinitely you could you could stack a, a cloud nine and have that, that kind of outputs but so it's very popular uh, uh box in in a lot of our commercial spaces such as uh bowling alleys sports bars uh restaurants and even in ballrooms uh etc now a couple of other things about it um it, it includes also the multi-viewer function. So you have the ability to take, let's say if you had nine inputs, you have the ability to split those nine inputs into nine images on one screen. Or you have also in the multi-viewer mode, you have the ability to switch between multi-viewer and quad view. So that means I can take four sources and make put them uh, in, in on one screen. Uh, so you can see them uh, and uh, I have the ability to select those sources that I want to be part of the quad view arrangement. Um, one of the really big important pieces uh, that people really love is instant switching. Uh, you know, the, in a sports bar, especially when you want to change the channel from one, one to the next, if you have, if you're trying to push that through with a 4K signal, uh, HDR, you know that there's going to be probably somewhere around 10 seconds before that picture finally shows up. And you just don't want that kind of interruption in a commercial environment. So we have what is called instant switching. And it really is instant. If you look the other way for even a half second, you will miss the switch. And so, and I've had that with, with installers before that they say, I don't think it's working. Oh, wait a minute. I just wasn't watching. And and, and, and so they, they figure that out. Another thing about it that's that's really critical is it's is it's an HD based T solution. So what does that mean? That means that we're not you're not having to use let's say an off the shelf uh, Cisco data switch like an SG300 or a 500 or a Luxol or one of those kind of things to run the video data through. It has its own separate HD based T network. So uh, that means that there's nothing else to interfere with video signal. And that allows us to do something that a lot of people can't do, which is to send uncompressed 1080p signals to every station. 
That means that whatever your source is doing, that's exactly what it's going to be on the other end. We're not having to mess with the signal or compress it down and get it to fit on a data switch because we're not using regular Ethernet, we're using HDBase-T. And, uh, and one of the uh, features also that I like to talk about, and especially this is the piece that, that, uh, that's important when it comes to, uh, uh, let's say you have an installation where they've got a whole bunch of TVs that do not, you cannot control using either IP or RS-232. Uh, you have the ability with the cloud nines to send a command, or IR command, to each and every individual the display on each Cloud9 switch. So as you may notice on the picture down at the bottom of the back, back of the unit, you can see IR RX extensions, one through nine. So that means I can send an IR independent IR signal to each individual receiver. Now, there's also built into the web interface a full routing table that allows me to say, I just want to send whatever signal I'm going to put in the IR input number one I want that to go to all nine. So I don't have to have like nine IR feeds to get a power command out to all nine R IR uh, uh, displays. Okay, so that's a nice feature. A second feature that uh, we, uh, and I think it's maybe covered on the next slide, uh, is RS-232 pass-through. So for those that uh, have heard of that before or know what it does, that's a really critical feature. What it does for you is it allows you, for ex example, uh, let's take a, an LG television, LG commercial display. Uh, has, you can control it using RS-232. Okay, so how do you get the RS-232 commands there? Well, you can embed them in a special command that you send through the Cloud9, and it goes right out the HDBase T switch, down the category wire to the receiver on the other end, and the receiver on the other end has a little modem on it, basically a serial modem uh, that you can uh, plug a serial cable into the back of the, the, the LG TV. And I can send power on and off commands. And not just that, but whatever commands I want to send. I mean, literally, I could send volume level commands. I could send input commands. It doesn't matter. Uh, I can send anything. I just, I just embed it into this special command that uh, runs right through the IR, uh, the, uh, the, the Cloud9 AC based T network system. So that's another important piece uh, to keep in mind. Now, here's why we like to brag about uncompressed. I mean, it's, it's really, it comes down to, you know, like it's the economy stupid, it's, it's the picture stupid. Okay, I mean, really, literally the quality is exactly whatever the source is. So if you haven't have a Blu-ray player uh, 1080p Blu-ray player, and you want that that disc to look pristine on every single uh, TV, uncompressed, unmolested. Uh, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to do it with the Cloud9 because it doesn't compress the signal. Uh, the problem with with AV over IP systems is that the signal can be compressed up to 50 times. I mean, and, and I mean, so that really, really, uh, you know strips a lot of data out of the picture, out of the image. And that adds noise, that adds banding, that adds problems with color accuracy because it doesn't have as much color data as it should have. And, and it also messes with the dynamic range itself. Um, and so, you know, that's why, you know, we like to brag about the, you know, that we're uncompressed because, and, and I've, I've done this, I've, I've, we've done lots of different installations uh, and in some cases, we've swapped out an existing uh, HD over IP system in favor of our cloud nines. And the very first thing that came out of the, 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 uh, the mouths of not only the, the owner of the bar or, or bowling alley or whatever, uh, but the integrator as well was, wow, the picture looks so much better than it did uh, you know, before, just am am amazing improvement in the picture quality versus what they had installed previously. So that's a, you know, that's a really big thing. And it's a really nice point uh, when you're going to offer your client or customer, you know, a solution to their, their problems and their needs to be able to come to them and say, look, I'm going to get, you, you're going to get the best picture that your TVs are, are capable of producing. There isn't going to be anything interfering with that signal. Um, now, we have a couple of different uh, 
receiver options, and we mentioned before briefly in terms of the bullets, uh, you know, the Cloud9 can not only do multi-view, but it can also do video walls. And in fact, we have the most flexible implementation of video wall in the industry. Let's talk about the receivers first. You have a, a regular type receiver that would not do video walls or any video wall processing. And then we have a video wall processor. Okay, so there's your two choices. Now you can mix and match these within a system. So you can have a system with 20 TVs and four of them are gonna be a video wall and the other, other 16 are gonna be regular. Well, that's fine. So you just need the, the, the video wall processors for the four TVs that are gonna do video wall. So that, that, that helps cut down on, on how much it's gonna cost to put together a, a robust setup like that. Um, we have, variety of different things we could do. This is kind of an example of what I was just talking about. And one of the things to talk about as well is that our Cloud9 boxes are now all 150 meter boxes, okay? So that means it's uh, 500 and something feet uh, in terms of a run for uncompressed 1080p. So uh, here you can see a, a mix and match of sources and displays and you know they all get along just fine. Let's look at the, and, and of course, the beautiful video wall. I'm going to go to the next slide, which kind of shows you some of the flexibility in our video wall implementation. Now, here we have really an example of a three by three video wall. So, uh, so there's nine panels. Obviously, the top picture is with the space shuttle taking off is the actual, you know, video wall when you've got uh, the, the image spread over across nine displays or nine panels. However, the one just below is the same video wall, except what we did there is I sent a special command that said, let's make this cluster right now a two by two video wall. And then I want the other five panels to have independent sourcing. So I can mix and match anything I want in there, including the independent sourcing could even use the, the quad view function. Uh, so that we could have, you know, you could have it a split screen of four different different uh, images on that. So this is, this is where you know, we really stand out. Most video wall processors out there do video walls and they do a great job. I'm not saying they don't, but they don't, uh, uh, what they usually don't do is they can't do what we're doing here where we're splitting it or, or repurposing the video wall so that it can be more than just a video wall. And that's a, that's a really great point, especially when you're going to your, your clients and you're saying, you know, here's a solution that's really great. Yeah, we can do a video wall, but wouldn't it be cool if we could do this and that also? And keep in mind that our, our video wall is robust and we can have up to an eight by eight video wall, which is 64 panels. So, you know, uh, you've got the ultimate in flexibility and, uh, and, and uh, you know, you could have the ginormous video wall, obviously, if you had uh, uh, 64 panels. Uh, I'm going to get into the video flux in a moment. One thing I just want to show you is I'm just going to switch really quickly to a picture. Here's a video wall that we did at an airport. It's a private airport in uh, Greenville, North Carolina. Uh, and this is the, the CEO's office. And this is just when things got hung on the wall. But we had done the video wall. So one of the things to keep in mind with our video walls is that we we support bezel compensation. So it allows you to take measurements of the panels, measure the, the gaps between the panels, measure the bezel widths, measure, measure the internal dimensions of the panel itself, meaning width and height. And you type those into a little box and you hit a button and it basically calculates what the mapping is going to be. Now that's the, the reason that's important is because Unlike other, other you know, uh, commands that you can send, like a switching command uh, for uh, you know, a Cloud9 or, or uh, the video flux, which we'll talk about in a minute. With video walls, you're not only sending a switching command, but you're also sending a command that tells the video wall processor what the actual mapping coordinates are for each panel. And those are going to be custom every time because unless you're going to have the same exact panel every time because there's probably going to be you're going to run into different panels. You're going to run into different brands 
and models and size screen sizes and all this other stuff the bezel thicknesses are going to be different so all of that has to be custom put in and uh, when we get into like a, a control system if if you're going to try to do it with a control system that's out there right now the control system has to be 100 percent customizable in order for you to be able to input embed into the commands themselves the the bezel compensation coordinates uh and mapping coordinates uh so you know that that falls under the category of like crestron is 100 percent customizable um and uh but probably not control four okay you know control four is is also probably not the best choice for a control system in a commercial environment either so you know you have those kinds of things i also just want to make you aware of the fact that we have a service called canvas and uh, we uh, we can actually uh, program a complete remote for your project whatever it might be without you having to worry about any of it that doesn't uh, that doesn't just include video walls but it also includes things like uh, uh, you know sound and climate and lighting and uh, just general switching and it'll be custom logoed to the 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 the, the, lo the location itself so it'll have you know the their logo their their floor plan uh, laid out on the screen so that people can just go and, and select the source and select the destination and it'll look just perfect and uh, uh, so that's available as well in terms of of uh, uh, a service if you don't want to deal with it yourself or hey John. If, yes Hey, Jason here. I just wanted to run one thing by you. It's something I've seen in the past, and and people have uh, people have asked for it before. But what about like a custom video wall where you have maybe in like a a shopping mall or something where you might have, you know, five panels across but only two panels up and down. Uh, so maybe it's a non-traditional. It's not a sixteen by nine per se. Is that something that we're capable of doing? Uh, absolutely. Great question. Uh, yes. The uh, I mean, you could have a, a, a five by one, okay? Um, it doesn't matter. You know, obviously what's gonna fit best uh, with most content, when I say most content, I mean like 99.999% of the content out there is gonna be 16 by nine aspect ratio. And so you're gonna want to have a two by two video wall or a three by three if you want that. Now, we do this at trade shows all the time. You'll have these towers of video panel or panels. Uh, so they're, they're just really tall and you know, you need to be able to stretch an image and maybe they're one or two wide and about 12 tall. Okay. So imagine that kind of configuration. All right. Something like that is going to take custom content. You're going to have to get into Photoshop or something and say, I want this image to be this by that. And it needs to fit, however, still within the logic of a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Okay, so that's how they get away with it. So, yes, you can have that kind of custom configuration. Absolutely, uh, uh, we support that. Uh, but you just have to keep in mind that it's going to be all custom content because otherwise, you know, if I had a, a say five across and, and, and it was that was it, just you know, one by five, that means that. The 16 by 9, the aspect ratio that we're cutting off two thirds of the, the image. So you've got to design an image that'll fit in that upper third and look fine without it looking like chopped off or something. So uh, I think that probably answered it. All right. So um, let's go on to the next uh, product. This is good. We, we call Video Flex. You know, and one of the things you notice about us, you know, more and more, we're doing it more and more, is we're naming our products. So we have the Cloud9, we have the Video Flux, you know, future stuff will we'll have names to them as opposed to model numbers. Uh, we think that that makes it easier for people to remember and, uh, and, and, and to have a conversation about. Uh, so here we have our Video Flux, and what we love about this, and this is one of our very first switches that we ever made. And uh, you know, since we we own our factory, we're able to go in and specify you know just what kind of connections we wanted. So this one is really really versatile. Uh, you've got HDMI input, you've got composite video out, you've got component video um, inputs, and you've got VGA. So I mean, just uh, lots of different sources that you can put on here. Uh, so there's your four inputs, and then you have two outputs so you can go out to two different displays and 
there's there's all kinds of cool things you can do. So for example, I'm going to go to the next next phase and show you some multi-view modes that it does. All right. So with multi-view, we have really either quad view, which is really the same thing as multi-view in this particular instance, or we have picture in picture. So that's kind of like the best way to describe it. So if we kind of look at the middle area uh, near the top, and I forgot, Jason, I, I, I can't remember how, you, oh, is it the pencil that uh, I can Yeah, use? if you hit that, you can pick a laser pointer. Okay, uh, no, perfect. There, you okay. Go. there we go, okay. So here's quad view up here at the top, but then over here to the right more, here's, here's a picture in picture. Well, basically we're taking those same four sources and we're just moving them around and deciding how we want to view them. So for example, the, the, uh, the source that's underneath the three picture in pictures could be the main picture, let's say, that's a source. But then we have three picture in picture sources as well. These can be independently sized and positioned. So, you know, it's almost an infinite number of you know different ways you can throw that those those things around uh, so this is a really cool thing and, and we have a very robust uh, api for for sending commands to do this and some nice uh, pc software that has lots of presets that you can set up so once you've gotten the preset set up you can recall those presets so this is where you know you don't have to have nearly as uh as complex a, a, a control system because once you've got everything set up the way you want it with the presets, you, all you're having to do is control the, you know, recall the presets themselves. Now I'm going to give you just kind of an example of what it looks like in person. So I'm switching over to a little program where I can bring my iPad up. And uh, sorry if I made anybody dizzy just now. You know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, here we go. Uh, I'm going to hit the uh, video matrix multi-view button, and we're going to take a look. So we have our two modes over on the left. We have the multi-view mode. And we have the matrix mode. So when we're in matrix mode, we're a switch. We're just saying, let's take our inputs and send them to our two outputs. Okay, you don't, you know, so I, if I want to send everything out for cable box one, I hit that and it's sending it out to the two outputs or two or three or four. All right, just like that, whatever my sources are, I can do that. In multi view mode, I have presets for picture in picture. In this case, when I designed this, this layout, they wanted it done this way, where we have uh, the three picture and pictures that are going across the top of the screen. Uh, and those are the blue uh, colored buttons or colored letter uh, numbers. And, and to uh, switch one from the other so they can rotate around so that the picture underneath, the main picture underneath, can become number two input instead of number one. I just have the ability to just go like this and just rotate it around. And to give you a better idea of what I mean by that is if we go over to quad view where I set up presets, I have quad view here that's saying input one is upper left, two is upper right, three is lower right, four is lower left, or I can go to input or two, this other preset, and now I've rotated input one over to the right one and moved input two down and moved three down. So we're rotating around. As you can see, I can just kind of go like this. All right, this Really cool things. Also, uh, audio sources. I have the ability, for example, uh, to be watching something on, um, you know, let's say uh, the main picture is going to be on the picture in picture. It's going to be over here on green. So that means we're going to have three green picture in pictures. But I don't want the sound from that image, uh, that picture, that content. I want to use my media PC instead. So I just tap that down here for the audio piece. So it gives me really nice flexibility, easy switching around and so forth. So that's a quick look at, like, for example, one, uh, the Canvas control system, some of the things you can do with it and uh, see how nice it looks. And then also that uh, uh, gives you a little better idea how, to, how cool the, this VideoFlex product is. And uh, as I mentioned before, Canvas is, uh, you know, a custom programming service. Now, what we've done is that we... You know, in most cases, and as you'll see here in this example, uh, we've got a, a sports bar. We can see the layout. And this is actually a real sports bar in Utica, New York. Uh, we can see over on the left all the direct TVs that they're using. And one of the things you may notice as well is that you can see within the buttons themselves the actual tuning feedbacks from the direct TV boxes. 
so that you know exactly what's playing on what box. Uh, and then all you have to do is select one of the sources on the left and then tap on one of the TVs on the right. And it will then tell it, tell the Cloud9 to make that switch to that TV. And if once I've selected a single source, I can click on every single one of these over here if I wanted that single source to go to all the TVs. And so this is a fairly typical uh, Canvas custom design where some of it is stuff that we're going to use because we've already designed it. We've already designed the interface. So it's kind of become a template for us. But at the same time, we've customized it to the uh you know the 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 bar or whatever that uh where this is actually going to be installed so um that's canvas that's available if you don't want to do the programming and, and hassle with all that stuff we'll be more than happy to do that for you um, and with that i'm going to hand this back over to jason um because uh it's now his turn to take over again i have to get rid of this pointer here, John, I can grab it from from here. Oh, you can? Okay. Yeah, I can do it from here. Okay, okay. now you guys should be seeing my screen. Can you see the PowerPoint, John? I'm coming over now. Yes, no, I see. Now I do. Yes. Okay, great. So I should. we should be on the Confrex slide, correct? Correct. Okay, cool. Thank you for that, man. That's some awesome information in there. Um, I didn't see any other uh, questions come in except for if the uh, video flux does support HDR. Uh, no, it does not. It does do 4K, but does not do uh, HDR at this point. Okay, so 4K, um, no HDR. Yeah, stay tuned. Cool. Yeah, that's all, yeah. Film at 11, yeah. as they used to say. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, John. Uh, stay with us here, and uh, you know, in case there's any other questions throughout the rest of the presentation, and I'm sure I'll probably uh, uh, have you chime in on a couple things too. But thank you, thank you. Okay, sure. Um, so uh, the next thing we're going to talk about are some wall plate transmitters. Um, these are fairly new products to us. We've made them in the past, but these particular SKUs are new to us. Um, we wanted to simplify the design a little bit and, and make it a little more robust for you. So. Uh, these are things that you're going to find uh, typically in like a classroom or a boardroom or a huddle room type of situation where somebody just wants to be able to plug in a laptop and and look at their their uh, their laptop screen up on the television or up on the projector so everybody can see it. So it's kind of a plug and play thing. And these actually are also your HD based T transmitters. So there's no extra hardware to make these work. But basically, there's three models that we're going to look at right now. Uh, the top model that you see over here is a, a very uh, very basic. Uh, this is a VGA or HDMI wall plate. Uh, it is signal sensing. So what's great about that is, uh, you know, whether somebody plugs into VGA or HDMI, uh, the, the transmitter knows uh, and sees that. So it automatically switches to the correct input for you. Again, these are also HD based T transmitters. So um, on the other end, but right before the display, you can uh, you can have your HD base T receiver, or in some cases where the display itself has HD base T, you can just plug directly in with with your category cable. Uh, I do want to point out, though, that it's not only HD base T. If you just wanted to use this product uh, to still hardwire with HDMI or VGA, maybe the run's not all that long, you can still still do that as well. So a couple of cool features there. Uh, so the first top model that you see here is uh, VGA and HDMI. There's also a uh, display port with HDMI, and there's also one that's just HDMI only. So depending on your application and depending on um, what you might need, uh, which connection type for and which room you're in and things like that, uh, we do have three different options there for you. Uh, these uh, these HD base T transmitters uh, can either work in a 70 meter or a 100 meter range. So depending on the uh, the length that you need, it's going to determine the model that you get. So uh, just a little bit there about some of our wall plates. Those are uh, becoming very popular already. These uh, this switch is brand new to us. I'm very excited about this myself because uh, this really kind of takes the place of three or four different pieces of hardware. So imagine that you're putting a system into a, a classroom or a lecture hall. So normally you'd have to have a few things. You'd have to have an uh, HDMI matrix switch to be able to toggle between your different sources and look at it on the on the projector or the or the video wall or whatnot. Uh, then you also have to have an audio amplifier uh, so everyone can hear uh, what's going on and, and hear the um, hear the presentation. And you also have to have a separate mixer or something for a microphone in case you need a lapel mic or a handheld mic. So maybe it's a big lecture hall or, or something like along those lines. So normally you'd have to have three, maybe four different boxes to be able to, to make this system work. So we wanted to make something a little more robust and something that was a little bit easier. So we decided to put everything into one box. Uh, this is the AV Pro Edge AC CX100 RAMP. 
So built into this box, you have a few things. You do have a two by two HDMI matrix switch, so two inputs and two outputs. You also have a built-in audio amplifier. Uh, you also have a microphone input. So in this case, you have one box that takes the place of uh, what you normally would would use three or four boxes for. Now there's, um, there is an amplifier built into this. So if you're running a pair of loudspeakers so that people could hear the presentation, that's all great. Uh, and, and you can use it all in one box. But in the case that maybe you have a distributed audio system or maybe you have a more powerful amplifier and more powerful speakers, maybe it's uh, something as big as like a, a concert hall, um, you can just uh, use a normal plain old uh, analog audio out or even a spiteth out to get those audio signals to a, to a bigger, more powerful audio system if, if that's what you choose to use. Uh, so this is a, a cool new product. Again, it's ACCX100RAMP. Uh, again, HD base T built in, uh, microphone inputs. It's a two by two video matrix switch with audio extraction and a built in audio amplifier as well. Really excited about this piece. Hey, Jason. Uh, sure, go, ahead, John. To go back to that piece for a second. Yeah, sure. so just wanted to talk about this a little bit. We talked about this as a single room switch and amplifier. And, you know, that single room could actually be a big single room, like a lecture hall or something to that effect, uh, because you have the audio outputs, the balanced audio outputs that could go to a, an amplifier that maybe has a little more oomph than the one that's built in uh, into, the, the, into the ramp. Uh, that would allow it to then obviously. Uh, you know, get to get out to more speakers, and and so this this has applications for that, uh, and still being able to control mic levels and, and volume levels uh, uh, as far as voiceover and all that kind of stuff. You know, normally with something like this, and I mean, because we do this all the time, is that we have to, you know, we'll have our switcher, our matrix switcher, and then in will come another product like. Uh, and here's here's some examples. Uh, the BSS London 100. If anyone's ever heard of that thing, it's a mixer. So it's a mixer. There's also things like the Tessera Forte, the QSC. All of these are mixers that are designed. You know, only reason they're brought in is because they want to use a microphone, and they are they are extremely difficult to program and support because they don't have built-in APIs in a lot of cases. You actually have to design your your system and then extract the codes out of it at, based on the design. So it's not user friendly, even for you know somebody that's an experienced programmer. So what's cool about something like this is that you no longer need to have that mixer. This is built in with a mixer. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to point that out. No, that's a great call, John. That's a good call. And, and um, you know, I've seen those mixers before uh, in, in my passing in my time. And they're not in, they're not inexpensive by any means. So having you know this is a cost-effective solution and a space-effective solution too. Good, good. Okay, uh, we're going to talk a little bit next about extenders. Um, I'm not going to go through each model and, and rattle off all the features and, and benefits and things like that. I wanted to show you guys this slide just to give you an idea of how many extenders we actually uh, have in our inventory and how many we we manufacture. Extenders are probably our most common and, and, and best-selling product that we make at AV Pro. Uh, but just to give you kind of an idea, you know, anywhere from 40 meters, uh, if you're using standard category cable to 100 meters, we have plenty of solutions here for different extenders with different features. We have some that are really basic that just simply extend the signal. And we have some that are really robust with built-in EDU management, scaling, built test patterns, tons and tons of cool stuff. Uh, we do even have a fiber optic uh, extender, a fiber-based extender, so what that means is instead of using category cable uh, to connect the transmitter to the receiver, instead you're using a piece of fiber optic cable. Um, and I know that could be uh, a bit shocking to hear, uh, and it may be a surprise to some people that, that we're, we're in the fiber world, but what, what you have to understand about fiber these days, it's no longer this super expensive, scary, you need a special license and really specific expensive tools to be able to terminate it. Uh, fiber now, uh, especially with ClearLine, who we partner with, this, these fiber cables are terminatable in the field. They're very cost effective. The ends are reusable. Um, and we do have an extender product, and we'll look at it in a few slides here, but we do have an extender product that will allow you to go up to two kilometers. So if you're, if you're wiring up the, um, you know, the local baseball stadium or uh, maybe a big mega church or one of those types of things, and you need to go further than 100 meters, no big deal. We can go up to two kilometers if we want to. So let's take a look at, um, Let's take a look at some of the extenders. Uh, at the top here, um, you see the UHD series extenders. 
Uh, those are perfect for anybody who is running just you know normal 1080 type signals uh, with about 10.2 gigs worth of bandwidth. Uh, so this is kind of your go-to, your daily driver, if you will. Uh, these come in two different length varieties. You can get them either in a 70 meter or a 100 meter variety. Uh, what's great about these is you only have to power one side. You don't have to power both sides. Uh, so you can power the side uh, by the receiver, like in your rack, for example. I'm sorry, but uh, you could power the transmitter in your rack and then the receiver that's over by the display, you know, maybe 100 meters away or so, then that doesn't need power at all. So only one side needs to be powered. You can also pass control signals uh, through the, uh, through the uh, extender kit as well. So if you want to send IR or RS-232 signals from a remote location back to the rack, you can do that through the extender kit as well, which is really cool. Uh, on the bottom example there, the ACEX70 UHD BT BKT, um, that's more of a simple kit where, um, you know, if you just need to get signal from point A to point B and doesn't have to be anything fancy as far as EDID management and you don't need any special features or anything like that, you just simply need to make the, the HDMI cable longer, then uh, we have that kit as well for you there as well. Uh, again, these are both AV, AV Pro Edge products, so they bo do both carry a 10-year warranty. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, for a high-level uh, overview, at least, I think that covers it. John, did I miss anything on the extenders? No, I don't think so. No, that looks okay. good. Cool. Thank you. Good, good, good. All right. So I mentioned before about the fiber extenders. I kind of teased about that, and, and here's what we're looking at, uh, the first two examples here. The top model, as you see here, is ACEXO444 kit. Uh, that's for somebody who needs to extend a HDMI signal longer than 100 meters. Uh, this will actually go up to two kilometers based on the type of fiber that you use. Uh, if you're using single mode fiber, which is known to be better for long distances, you can go the full two kilometers. If you're using optical multi-mode fiber, which is more common in, in our world, uh, you can still go up to 300 meters. So you can still go really, really far. Um, these also support audio return channels, so if you do have somebody who's accessing apps and things like that from the display itself, we can get audio back to your rack. Uh, we do have built-in test patterns on this product, so if you do need to test infrastructure or test a display for a certain resolution, you can certainly do that with the extender kit itself. And also built-in EDID management. Uh, that can get really uh, tricky sometimes, especially if you have a mix of displays of different resolutions and maybe one display is not showing the right resolution or something like that, or maybe one display is flickering or whatever the case might be, uh, you can take a known good EDID, one that the system likes, and uh, you can use that EDID throughout the system. Uh, one thing I do want to point out about the fiber extenders is they do come in two varieties. Uh, there is one that is compressed and one that is fully uncompressed. Uh, the fully, uh, the uncompressed version is for the ultimate in picture quality and the ultimate for somebody who might be a video t file type of person. Uh, that is completely uncompressed, uh, up to 18 gigs if you need it, all the way from point A to point B. Um, on the bottom examples here, we are looking at some more category type extenders, uh, and this is the 444 series. So if you are needing something that's up to 18 gigs with HDR and things like that, you're going to want to look for an extender that has the 444 in the model number. As we look back here... Oh, hey, Jason, real quick. Yes, you, yeah, go ahead. Go back one. Just go back one. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about fiber real quick. You know, fiber is the future uh, with HDMI 2.1. And, you know, minimum of 24 gig bandwidth and going all the way up to, I think, 72 gigs or something like that. It's, it's ridiculous yeah, what it is. I mean, it's crazy. Okay. Fiber is what you're going to have to run in order to get that kind of signal to anywhere. All right. So one of the cool things that's happening with fiber is that it's become easily terminatable in the field. And so uh, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind uh, because... Fiber going forward is going to become much more affordable. It already has, but it's going to get even better uh, as the co economies of scale kick in. But it's also now you can terminate it, and you don't have to wear, like, special oven gloves to, to <laughs> handle it, okay? So anyway, Jason, go ahead. Yeah, no, it's funny because um, uh, part of the AV Pro Academy class that I talked about at the beginning of the presentation, we cover how to terminate fiber, and we, we have kits and things and have, have a – uh, the ability to let people practice on it and stuff. And I always say this in class, I'm like, you know, if I were building a house right now or if I were remodeling my house right now and redoing the AV, then it'd be a no brainer to at least pre-wire with fiber, um, you know, just to just to have it there for when we will need it one of these days. So no, it's a good call out. Thank you, John. Um, so a little bit more about the extenders, about the category extenders. The 444 extender series, uh, that's what you're going to want to use if you're looking at, uh, again, if you need the full 18 gigs, uh, for HDR and for 4K and things like that. Those come in a few different length varieties as well, 40 meters, 70 meters, 100 meters. 
Uh, what's also nice about uh, the plus models, you'll see, you'll see a plus in some of the models. The plus models also add K, uh, KVM support or, or USB extension support. So if you do have a keyboard or, or a mouse or something that was, um, you know, maybe um, in one room and you need to get the those commands to the, uh, maybe there's a PC in the rack in, in another room, uh, you can do that as well, which is super cool. Uh, and again, a lot of this stuff is going to start to sound repetitive because uh, we, we want to give you guys the most robust types of products that we can. But again, uh, built-in test patterns for testing the infrastructure, testing displays, built-in EDID management if, if you need to manage your EDID on your own, and built-in scaling too. Uh, one of those cases where you might be retrofitting a job and um, five of the new screens are 4K, but there's still one screen maybe in, in a kitchen somewhere that nobody really cares too much about the video quality, so it's still only 720p. Uh, you know, you do have those situations where you do need a scaler, and uh, we do like to put that scaler into the extender for you. So no separate box, hey, no Jason, separate, did, separate thing you uh, need. Sure, John, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, quick question. Uh, someone was asking if the EX70 supports ARC, and the answer is no. However, we have two two products, two extender sets that do, and that's the the 40M plus and the 100M. So just as, as an FYI. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Good question. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for chiming in on that one. Okay. Um, now, one thing that I love, I'm a big nerd for, is a nice looking rack. Um, you guys have probably all seen the different pages on Instagram and and on Twitter and whatnot, where where people post up how nice their racks look and you know, they get lots, lots of nice comments and things like that. So I'm, I'm a big sucker, especially coming from an installer's background. Um, I love nice wire dressings and I, and I like a nice looking rack. So we wanted to develop a few products for you to help the installation uh, be a, a less less wiring, less messy, and, and, and honestly, uh, easier to troubleshoot. Uh, if you guys have ever tried to troubleshoot a rack before where the wire management was really bad, or if you've come into a job uh, taken over from another company and maybe they didn't do such a good job of wire managing, now you're staring at a rat's nest of wiring behind behind a rack, and you know a lot of times products can overheat because there's no way for the uh, heat to ventilate out, and uh, just trying to figure out which wire goes to what is a total nightmare. So these two products will help you in those situations. Uh, the top uh, the top piece that you see up here is called the Power Squid. So instead of powering eight transmitters at your receiver, you only have to power uh, one. Uh, so in other words, this will take th this one um, Power Squid will take the place of potentially eight power supplies on your transmitters. That helps clean up the installation quite a bit, helps uh, keep your wires nice and clean. Uh, the second thing on the bottom here, the squid rack, uh, this is a rack mountable uh, piece of steel that you mount uh, up to all eight, or, or if you had more than eight, you could obviously add more than one rack here. Uh, but th this will let the, um, the transmitters stand up in such a way that uh, they're easy to get to, the heat can, you'll see there's some spacing in between each piece here. So heat and ventilation and stuff like that's not really an issue anymore. You don't have to stack them on top of each other. And as we all know, heat rises. So uh, by the time you get to the, if you have eight of them stacked on top of each other, the top half of that whole entire stack is just uh, on fire almost, uh, hot to touch even. So uh, these two products, uh, keep these in mind if you want to keep a nice clean installation and a nice clean look and a nice clean rack. And um, you know, these are the kind of things, you know, we, we, we go to CEDIA every year and when they're handing out like the CEDIA awards and they're, they're honoring integrators for, for, for their great work, uh, these are the type of things they look for. They look for nice wire dressing, they look for heat and ventilation, and um, they look for really clean installs. So, um, you know, this is, uh, this, is, this is the kind of stuff that'll kind of put you over the edge and put you over the top uh, against your competitors. Nice clean installations, I, I really love that. Um, next, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, matrix switches that we offer. Um, kind of like what I mentioned before with the extenders, um, you know, I don't want to go through each one of these and, and call out every single thing about each one, but just wanted to give you guys an idea, give you guys a snapshot of how many different matrix switches uh, we deal with on a daily basis and how many we manufacture and sell. Uh, if you have any specific questions about any of these, um, the, the two graphs, uh, like uh, this, this that you see on the screen now and, and the... Uh, and the graph that showed us all the different features and, and whatnot on the extender kits. Those are on our website, of course. And if you have any really specific questions about uh, about any of this stuff, you can always give our sales engineers a call, and uh, they're happy to point out the differences and, and give you the benefits in those types of things. But as you can see, we have a lot of different matrix switches. Uh, they're going to come in several varieties as far as the amount of inputs and the amount of outputs. Uh, the smallest one that we make is the MX, uh, ACMX42 AUHD. That's a uh, four input, two output HDMI matrix switch. 
Um, this will help you if you have, maybe it's a small project with just two displays and four sources. This is a good, a good solution to go with. Uh, one thing I do want to point out about the model numbers, uh, you will see AUHD in the model number. And whenever you see that, just keep in mind that if you do need the full 18 gigs and you do need 4K and HDR and those types of things, anytime you see AUHD in the model number, that means that that product is compatible with, with those high, super, super high bandwidth signals. So just keep that in mind if that is part of your project. And that, Next, that includes, uh, real quick, that includes Dolby Vision. So Yes, just, good. Oh, yeah, good call. Yep, that includes all flavors of HDR, including Dolby Vision. Thank you, John. Um, the next one that we're going to look at is the MX, uh, ACMX44 AUHD. Uh, that's a four input, four output uh, switch, just like the 4x2, just with more outputs. Next is probably our most popular product as far as matrix switches go. That's the ACMX88 AUHD. That's just like the 4x4, except for its eight inputs and eight outputs. Uh, the next product is pretty unique, pretty interesting. It's actually one of my favorites, ACMX88 AUHD NSFS. What the NSFS means there is no scaling, fast switching. So let's say you're working on a project where all of the displays and all of the sources are of the same resolution, meaning you don't need scalers, you don't need all the extra things built in that you see in like an MX88 AUHD. If you just need something that switches inputs and outputs very quickly, and we don't need scaling, we don't need all the extra things, the NSFS switch is awesome. In fact, the NSFS switch is what we use in our ISF calibration class because we're dealing with all sources and, and TVs of the same resolution and whatnot, and same capabilities. So that's a great switch. It's nice and fast. Uh, that's something to consider as well. And then last but not least, there's also a ACMX 16x16 AUHD, which is exactly like the rest, except for we have 16 inputs and 16 outputs. Uh, and what I do want to point out about this product, which I do love, for being a 16 by 16, it's still only one rack unit, which is kind of cool. Usually these are usually by the time you get to that many inputs and outputs, you've got a 1.5 or even a two rack unit uh, chassis, and it, it, it's pretty big. Uh, but lots of cool features built into these matrix switches: audio extraction, control over IP. Uh, these are compatible. If you're not going to use our Canvas control system, that's totally fine. But we have the APIs available for all the major control manufacturers: Crestron, Savant, RTI. URC, Elon, I think I named all of them. I could have missed one or two, but but uh, but no worries there. We do cover basically all the all the majors. Um, I do want to point these two out as well. This is a AU, uh, ACMX44 AUHD HD base T and ACMX88 AUHD HD base T. Now what you'll notice here is there's an HD base T in the model number. We try to make this very easy. So if you are going to be using HD base T technology for uh, for transmitting signals to your displays, these have the HD base T transmitters built into them. So in other words, if I connect my category cable here to output one, wherever out wherever display one is, you know maybe in another room or whatever, you know all I need to do now is plug straight into my HD base T receiver and I can get signal to that display. So the transmitters are already built in. What I also like about this too is each output has an HD base T and a HDMI output and those mirror each other. So for example, on the on the 44, you could potentially have eight outputs if you're okay with having you know every other display showing the same thing. So in a system where all the screens are showing the same thing, for example, you could use something like this and, and be able to have eight displays even though it's technically only a four by four switch. So that's pretty cool too. I, I really I really like that. And just to give you guys a head up as heads up as well, I don't think I mentioned it here. Uh, but we have been at we have been asked in the past, especially from guys who work on the commercial side of things, for a switch that has even more inputs and outputs. Um, and I just do want to mention that um, there are talks of and there are plans for a 20 by 20. So if you need to go that extra distance and uh, have the extra inputs and things like that, then that'd be a product to look forward to in the future. Uh, and that would be the 20 by 20. Okay, cool. We do want to mention scalers just for a moment. I do, do want to take a minute to mention the scalers because you may be in a situation where you're retrofitting a job and maybe some of the displays are lower resolution than the others. Um, and you, um, you know, you need to be able to, you know, you have two choices in that situation. Let's say you have a mix of 1080 and 4K displays or 720 and 1080 displays. Let's say you have a mix of displays of different resolutions. Typically what you have to do with a traditional matrix switch um, is you have to scale down the signal to whatever the lowest display is so that all the displays will actually show a picture. The problem with that is, is now you're sending, uh, you know, now you're only looking at, for example, 720p on a 1080 display or only looking at 1080 on a 4K display. 
what these little scalers will do, these will help you maximize each display for its capable, uh, for, for whatever its capabilities are, for whatever resolution that it, that it, that it likes. So let's say, for example, that you have a, a full uh, distributed system of, with all 4K displays, but only one display is 1080p. Well, if you're not using a matrix switch with the scaling built in, no worries. You can use one of these little scalers. This goes in line with the HDMI cable right before the TV. Uh, you can do all your scaling, and you could even do EDID management on it as well. Um, now, what's cool about the, this top unit here, this is called an ACSC, uh, ACSC1 AUHD. We commonly call it the SC1. Um, that's a really simple device that will let you scale from 1080p to 4K or 4K down to 1080p. So if you just need to go one step up or one step down, the uh, SC1 is a great product for you. Uh, again, also built in EDID management. Everything's controlled on the front panel. There are a, a few buttons on the side to let you pick your scaling, uh, your EDID, your things like that. Uh, you can also lock the button, so if somebody reaches back there while they're cleaning and accidentally bumps a button, it doesn't bring <laughs> it doesn't bring down the system or anything like that. Uh, the bottom product that you see is the SC2, uh, which is very very similar to the SC1. But what's really special about the SC2 is now we can scale signals all the way down to 480 and all the way up to 4K. So where the SC1 goes 1080p to 4K and vice versa, the SC1 can go all the way down to 480, all the way up to 4K. This is a really good product. If, you, uh, if you're if you having issues with interlay signals, which does tend to happen through distributed systems, what's cool about the SC2 is let's say you plug the SC2 into the output of a, a source that's only an uh, interlay signal. The SC2 will automatically convert that interlay signal to progressive so it moves around the distributed system much, much easier. So just having it plugged in sometimes will, will help in those weird situations. One more thing I do want to call out about these scalers and then we'll move on to the next topic. We do have problems sometimes with long HDMI runs or sometimes just uh, really inexpensive sources or really inexpensive displays where the HDMI equalization is not so good. Um, what's great about these scalers is they'll re-equalize and re-amplify the HDMI signal. So if you are having a problem with like a flashing picture or maybe a handshake issue or something like that, just plugging one of these scalers in, even if you're not using it to scale, just plugging it in and having it in line with the HDMI cable that plugs into the television or the projector, will help uh, help keep those things locked in and help re-EQ the signal and, and help hopefully eliminate a lot of problems. These are things that I like to take to jobs with me, even if I might not uh, necessarily need them on the surface. If I do show up and I do have a problem with one display, I like to have these uh, in the truck or in my backpack and I'd rather have it than, uh, I'd rather I'd rather have it and not need it than, than need it and not have it. Uh, so these are, these are cool little tools to have on your trucks and have ready to go at a, at a moment's notice if you need them. The next thing we'll talk about are distribution amplifiers. Uh, these are more commonly known in the industry as HDMI splitters. And basically what this is, is if you have a handful of displays in your project and only one source, and it's okay to only see that one source on all displays, then this is a, a, a really cost-effective solution. Um, you know, these come in a few different varieties. And in this case, you might not need necessarily an HDMI matrix switch. Remember, a matrix switch lets us route any input to any output. But if you only have one input or one source and you're okay with watching the same source on all your displays, then a distribution amplifier is really a, a, a good thing to, to have in your back pocket. These come in a few varieties, uh, one input, two output, one input, four output. And then as you see here, the DA118 is one input, eight output. What's also nice about these two guys is they're fully 18 gig capable if you need to have that really high bandwidth signal. And also they're, uh, they're, you can piggyback them on top of each other. So let's say, and let's say the project starts off with four displays, and then all of a sudden you need a fifth and a sixth display. You could take a one by four and attach another one by four or one by two to it, and you can daisy chain the uh, distribution amplifiers together and essentially have as many outputs as you, as you need. And again, those also two built, uh, built in scaling, uh, built in EDID management, all that good stuff that we, we put in the rest of our products as well. Hey Jason, yeah, John, real quick. Yeah, go yeah ahead. just just wanted to add. Go uh, go back to the previous slide. We'll just talk about the DAs for a second. Sure. So the distribution amplifiers also, and this is more of a residential application, but but it it, it does come in handy in the commercial space as well. For example, the DA12, as I call it, the AC DA12 dash AUHD. I have a sports bar in which they had two two by two video walls, but really they were identical to each other. It's just that they were sandwiched together. Uh, opposing each other. So you had this horseshoe-shaped bar, one side 
padded two by two video wall. You go around to the other side of the bar on the opposite side and there's a two by two video wall. Well, we didn't want to put in eight video wall processors and basically have to do two separate video walls. So instead we took these DA12s and had an input go out to two outputs. So the, the input came off of the video wall processor receiver and into the two outputs to the two TVs and uh, voila, we had uh, two video walls for the price of one. Okay, so that's kind of a cool piece. The second thing was, uh, this is also something I call the ADR saver. So this is in the residential space, but basically what you can do with this is you can take it and uh, you can have one, what, take what, uh, the source signal and send it directly to the, the display, the TV, what have you, and the second output goes directly to the ADR for audio purposes only and it'll pass through the full audio atmos all that kind of stuff and at the same time pass through the unmolested uh, uh, uh video signal with dolby vision support and all that good stuff so those those are just you know some really cool tools to have on hand uh if some of you have heard of like hg fury and some some of those things these are these are much better just yeah. much better products I do run into that a lot too, where somebody does have a really high end, you know, home theater receiver, but it's a few years old, maybe doesn't support 4K or whatnot. But yeah, throwing these, throwing these one of uh, one of these guys in there is, is a big help, big big help. Okay, uh, moving on, uh, we got a couple more things, and then we'll let you guys loose for the day. Um, this is a pretty new product for us as well. This is an ACDA 28 AUHD. Uh, this is fully 18 gig capable if you need it. Uh, up to 18 gigs at least, uh, built-in Eden management, audio extraction, all the great things that we talked about before, built-in test pattern for troubleshooting. Uh, this is a pretty new product. It's two inputs, eight outputs, but it's switchable. So it's like its own little matrix switch in its own little right. Uh, but uh, if you're in a, a small to medium-sized project where only eight displays are needed, maybe in like a barber shop and uh, where you're showing like cable and maybe a, a player of some sort of media player, um, you know, something like that or one of those cases, um, uh, this is a really a really nice product too. It, it's cost effective. You don't have to run out and go buy a full eight by eight if you only have two inputs. Uh, you can get the two by eight, which is which is pretty cool. This is a really interesting product. In fact, one of my favorites uh, as of late. You know, we're we're in a world right now where any company who has a Facebook page or a YouTube channel or any end user who has a Facebook page or YouTube channel, you know, they can go live and they can show what what's going on in their life at the time or uh, you know, uh, there's plenty of, of live streaming out there right now. We see it all the time. We see it in the video game world quite a bit. It's everywhere right now. Um, what we wanted to do is offer a product that will uh, not only let you live stream, but also do it at really, really high quality. Um, think about when you live stream, say, to Facebook right now. If, if you're a company who's doing an installation and you want to walk around the, the project and, and show your potential customers on Facebook or YouTube, you know, everything that you did in this system, show them the rack, show them all the displays. You're doing all that with your phone camera, which is not bad these days, of course. We, we have some great cameras on our phones nowadays. But let's say you want to do something a little bit more high quality. Maybe you own a nice camera. Uh, maybe you own a, even a prosumer camera uh, with SDI connections. What you can do with the impulse box, uh, we, we manufactured this product with the help of Sencore, who's really, really good at all the encoding and decoding when it comes to video. So what the impulse will let you do is I could plug either an HDMI or an SDI camera into the impulse, and I can also plug the impulse into a internet router with an ethernet cable, and now I'm online and I can use my really nice camera to do all of my streaming. So if you do have a, a, a nice Sony or, or Nikon or Canon or prosumer type camera, maybe you wanna show something like, uh, maybe, maybe only half of the uh, fan showed up to the high school football game because it's raining and you wanna still be able to show that game to everybody who couldn't make it, you can totally stream on YouTube with a nice camera. Uh, church services, you know, maybe there's people who want to attend the, attend the church service, but they can't make it for any reason. You can hook up a camera, you can broadcast out to them. So really, like, the sky is the limit on this one, guys. Um, I've thought of some pretty cool applications I'd love to see. I'd love to see the security line at the airport before, <laughs> so I can determine how, how, uh, how uh, uh, when I need to leave my house and things like that. So. Um, if you have any need to live broadcast at high quality, this is a cool little box. Uh, here's just a little sort of a diagram that shows you how the connections go. Again, it's super simple. Your camera plugs into the box itself. Um, and this can be any camera with HDMI or SDI. We're not limited on brand or, or anything like that. Any camera that you have with those types of connections. And then from there, it's literally just broadcasting out to the internet 
uh, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, there's a specific streaming website for churches, Twitch for video game people. And then end users can watch either on their smart TV if they have, say, for example, the YouTube app installed or their PC or their phone. Uh, so this is live broadcast anywhere in the world with as high a quality as ca of camera that you'd like to use. Great little piece. I love that piece. Uh, next, we'll talk about audio tools, and then we'll talk about HDMI cables, and that'll be it for the day. So um, there are sometimes retrofit jobs where you were not able to uh, be there when the system was installed, and sometimes you have to figure out workarounds with, with audio signals. So here's a couple products that will help you with that. Um, we do have one product that will simply convert uh, digital coax or fiber optic to analog stereo left and right. That's the DAC COTO, C-O-T-O. Now this is just a DAC. It's just a digital to analog converter. So one thing that you have to keep in mind, if you're just, if it's two channel only, no big deal. Two channels traveling over the fiber optic cable, the COTO, uh, the, the DAC COTO, that converts that uh, stereo two channel over fiber into stereo two channel over analog. No big deal. Nothing's lost. Everything's there. But the issue that you run into sometimes, let's say out of a cable box where the stream or the, the movie or whatever the case is, could be 5.1. Well, if you convert fiber to two channel and you don't down mix the signal from 5.1 to two channel, you're only going to hear the front left and right channels. You're not going to hear the dialogue. You're not going to hear anything else. So we do also have a product called the ADM COTO that will not only convert the signal from analog to digital or vice versa, it'll also down mix it as well. So if you're doing any down mixing, this is the product to go with. If everything's just two channel anyway, then you can just get away with the DAC COTO. We do also have a standalone audio amplifier. Uh, there's plenty of cases where you have to pull the audio signal out of the, out of the, you have to pull the audio out of the signal and maybe you have to distribute the audio to a pair of speakers in a bathroom or a pair of speakers out on the patio or something like that. Uh, so we do build this uh, little 20 watt amplifier. If you do need to pull the signal out and you do need to, to uh, amplify that signal, uh, without going out and buying a AVR from a retail store or just a cheap amplifier somewhere, uh, we do have this uh, this product as well too. Uh, and the last thing that we'll talk about on this page is the digital audio extender. Uh, in some of those rare cases where you might have to extend the fiber optic cable for audio or extend the digital coax cable for audio, super, super long distances, uh, you can do that over a category cable. Uh, so keep that in mind if you ever need to make a, a toss link or a digital coax cable super, super long, you can always extend it with category cable. And that's the A-U-D-E-X-D-I-G-I. -E and last but not least, HDMI cables. Um, we do testing for about 100 different HDMI manufacturers in our own labs. Um, and we decided after testing bad cable after bad cable after bad cable that claimed to pass 18 gigs and really didn't, uh, we decided to just say forget about it. Uh, this is too hectic and, and um, you know, Installers were calling us and all these troubleshooting things. They think something's wrong with the matrix switch. It turns out it's a bad HDMI cable. So we said, forget all that. That's too much of a headache. Let's just make our own cables. And because we own the manufacturing plant in, in Shenzhen, we can make whatever we want. So we decided to make our own cables a couple of years ago, and they've been working out really, really well. Uh, we didn't make them too fancy. We didn't make them with special jackets or anything like that. We just wanted a really good, cost-effective, reliable cable that could pass 18 gigs. We took it even a step further. We know that HDMI 2.1 is coming. We know that 48 gigs is right around the road. We are gonna see some stuff at 24 gigs before we see everything at 48. So all the cables that we stock today, not even considering new models that are coming with HDMI 2.1, just the cables that we stock today that are rated for 18 gigs, we really overspect them and they really do 24 gigs. So these are cables that are sort of future-proofed, at least future-resistant. What I do like about the HDMI cables that you unfortunately can't see in this picture, if you flip that cable around, the, the head end around, you'll see two little tabs in the HDMI connector itself. And that just helps the cable from slipping out accidentally and things like that too. So a little more reliability there with the connection. And, and uh, we've tested these things in many, many, many different applications. Even in our training room up in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where some of our cable runs are pretty long, uh, we're using these cables with no problem at all. Uh, they come anywhere from half a meter uh, up to 20 meters in length if you need it. Uh, another cable that we make, which is super popular, I'm really, really uh, happy with these so far. Uh, we call them the AOC cables, active optical cables. These guys right here are available anywhere from one meter up to 40 meters. Now, what's so special about these and the reason we can get away with going 40 meters, the audio and the video, the actual data that's traveling through the cable, 
instead of it being traveling, instead of it traveling over copper like it is in a traditional HDMI cable, these are sort of a hybrid cable with fiber optics inside of them. So when we're sending all those high bandwidth data signals, they're actually traveling over fiber and not copper. So we can get away with a lot longer distances. There's less worry about EMI interference. Um, there's less worries about tons and tons of different things. Um, so these are awesome cables. I've been using them in my own home for quite a while now and, and really like them a lot. Um, again, long distances, no EMI interference, and they're fully capable of high bandwidth with all the nice uh, HDR, wide color gamut, high frame rates, all those types of things. Hey, so, Jason? Yes, real John, quick. yes. Let's go back to the cable. Yeah, okay, two, two real quick things. Okay, so first of all, on the active optical cables, they don't need an external power. They run right off Thank the... Thank you, the, I forgot the, about the, that. The HDMI power itself. So, you know, because a lot of the active optical cables out there need a little power supply to, to get them to, to send a signal. These do not. Uh, the other thing you may notice is a serial number on our copper cables. Uh, and so those come in handy for two reasons. One, you can, you'll be able to identify one cable from one end to the other, especially if you have a whole lot of connections, a whole a lot of cables going back and forth. You'd be able to say, hey, I've got number 86 on this end. Okay, plug that into the input one, whatever, you know, it, you've got that going. It also means we tested them. So that, that's a, it's just a little bit of a peace of mind that, you know, we're going to, you know, that cable is going to pass uh, as opposed to some of the cables that are quote unquote certified, uh, not, you know, actually passing uh, when uh, when you plug them in. So just a quick thing. All right. no, that's a good call out too. And, and I, I also want to call out, we talked earlier about the Meridio 6A, 6G and the Fox and the Hound test kit. Um, you know, if you're not sure about an HDMI cable, maybe there's no label on it or some unbranded cable. If you're not sure, you can use those, uh, the HDMI test tools, you can use those to actually test cable bandwidth as well. So if you do have a cable in a system, maybe it's questionable on length or quality or whatnot, you can use those test tools that we looked at in the first few slides today and test your cables to make sure they can pass all those high bandwidth signals that you may that you may need. So good, good call out, John, thank you so much. So guys, that's kind of it for today. Um, I hope this was informative and uh, if you're new to the company and you're new to AV Pro, I hope your uh, eyes are opened a little bit more and you know, we do take this stuff very seriously, but at the end of the day, we're here for you. Uh, we want you guys to have the, the easiest installation possible and anything we can do to help you as far as building products or tech support over the phone or whatever the case is, uh, please uh, please don't hesitate and, and, and don't ever be shy to give us a call. Let me check the question box one last time to see if there's anything else that um, that we may have missed here. I think Tom, uh, Tom did answer uh, most of the questions, which is awesome. Tom, thank you so much for manning the question box. There is one last question in here, and I'm actually not sure the answer. Maybe, John, you know this, and if we don't know the answer to this one, then we can certainly find it for you. But he asks which chip we're using on the active AOC cables. So there is a chip inside of the head end of the cable, because if the cable itself is fiber, that means it's passing light information. But at the end of it, we need electrons to come out. So there is a little chip in here that converts the electrons, uh, I'm sorry, that converts the photons back to electrons and vice versa. Now, what chip that is, I'm not sure. John, do you know? I don't, I don't. I, I would imagine that if it's HDMI, it's coming from Valens. Uh, I think it's a Valens chip probably? Much, yeah, that's the only, that's pretty much all we use are Valens. Okay, cool. But yeah, uh, I'm not 100% sure it, and I can we can find out and, and answer that question offline for the gentleman who asked. So guys, I don't see any more questions here in the question box. Again, thank you so much. I know we probably ran over a little bit on time, so uh, thanks for hanging with us. Uh, I didn't see anybody drop off, so hopefully that means that we were doing a good job of keeping your attention. So feel free to give us a call if you have any questions. Uh, thanks again for attending the webinar. Um, this will be posted on YouTube in the next 24 to 48 hours, so if you didn't get a chance to listen to all of it, you'll be able to go back and review it later and maybe show it to your coworkers and whatnot. So uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. Uh, our sales people are standing by. We also have a live chat on our website, whether it's Meridio or AV Pro Edge. So you can always live chat with us on the website as well. So thanks again, guys. Enjoy your afternoon. And I'm, uh, I'm happy to uh, answer any questions if you have any in the future. Feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time.